So Ackman is back. He came out with a new video, and we're going to watch it. Video title is uh, just a really, really great title. Uh, it's called Activision Blizzard is a Hilariously Bad Company. I, uh... Oh, man. What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here. And after questioning every aspect of my life recently... Yeah! yeah. I've decided to come back. Yes! It's time to get back to doing what I love most. Because yep. if there's one thing we can all count on in life, it's that Activision Blizzard will always find a way to make themselves look really, really... Weird. Good. Yeah. Why are we still here? This is a very beloved and well-respected company within the game industry, and it has a long history of ethical business practices oh, and absolutely. decisions, and almost no- Oh, wait, what was the other one? ...and it has a long history of I don't remember this. Call of Duty World War II's loot boxes are disrespectful cash grab, and this was in November 2017. I bet Eric is writing nowadays like, oh, well, these are not really that bad. You know, well, loot boxes... Listen, guys, it's a mobile game. Guys, it's a mobile game. It is what it is. Business practices and decisions, and almost That's no a good history idea. to speak of regarding controversy. I'm talking, yeah. of course, about Activision Blizzard. Yes, that one. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? Those of you thinking I'm being sarcastic, well, just take a look at this article. Activision Blizzard clears itself of any wrongdoing. Yeah, yeah, the government does that all the time. Uh, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they do. They do this all the time. They just, uh, you know, they investigate themselves and they find that they did nothing wrong. And, and the thing is that. Uh, Victim of unrelenting, it is the victim of an unrelenting barrage of media criticism. Man, who would do that? That sucks. Jeez. I mean, wow. what more proof do you possibly Yeah, need? they hired Amber Heard's PR firm. Hey, taste closed. Now let's all pre-order Diablo 4, shall we? Copy that. And so because this yeah. company can't seem to go one month without doing something stupid amazing i felt we should all take the time to point out all the spectacular things ab has done recently it's kind of funny that there's been so many other stupid things that have happened that we forgot about this one you know what i mean like we just forgot we forgot that this one even happened but before we do that, yeah. I'm proud to announce that this video is sponsored by War Thunder, a vehicular combat multiplayer game. Engage in epic dogfights across PC, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation 5. Pretty smooth flying, Fox. No purchase necessary, this bad boy is free to play. It's also cross-platform cool. with last-gen consoles. And there's over 2,000 different vehicles. I'm just, I'm just glad to see a sponsor of something that's not a mobile game. But honestly, like, this is, uh, yeah, it, it's not like some auto-battling mobile game. This with actually, tanks, this is cool. warships, helicopters, and airplanes. Yeah. This game has had a whopping 50 million players worldwide. And I'm the best pilot out of all of them. There's more There's than 100 lot. battlefields based on real historical events. That's War cool. Thunder offers a robust PvP and PvE experience. I was very surprised by how well the planes control on mouse and keyboard. Typically, you think you need joysticks. The controls here are amazing. Not to mention there's tons of different factions to choose from. So why oh, not so you can be a tank into too? a plane built by the USSR? Dogfights oh aren't God. just about shooting down other planes, but ground vehicles and objectives. There's so much to this game, and War Thunder is constantly being updated every few months. Can you have a mech new warrior? vehicles, maps, and other ways to play. And you can sign up for free. Yeah, is there a, is there a mech warrior? Using the link in the description warrior? and pinned comment. Doing so will get no you mechs? some exclusive bonuses. What about which Godzilla? Can include a premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and a three-day account boost. That was a good shot. So go do it. Download War Thunder using my special link, and I'll see you on the battlefield, soldier. Thank you, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. Activision Blizzard clears itself of any wrongdoing. The Call of Duty Problem publisher solved. says it's the victim of an unrelenting barrage of media criticism. I do think that people criticize Blizzard sometimes too much, and they criticize things that are not really that big of a deal. I think that the best example of this is like Overwatch 2. I don't think Overwatch 2 is really... like. I think if they just called it an Overwatch update and it's a new game, or it's like Overwatch Reforged, 
it would be fine, but people just have issue with the number two. The game's free. It, it, it's 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 f free game. Like I mean, fuck. Who cares what they call it? They're the victims in all of this, you guys. But on the real, I no. feel like the Blizzard half of this company continues. Wait, guys. Like it's free, guys. They made it free to play, right? Like we watched the video. It was made free to play. They said this in the last video. Yeah, it, it's free to play. And they got loop. They got rid of loot boxes. You realize this, right? Overwatch 2 removed its loot boxes, not the PVE. So, so, okay, so you don't get the full game for free? And now Blizzard's bad for that. If they've got a battle pass, yeah, a battle pass is fine. I, I, really, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off on a limb here and I'm gonna say it looks pretty good. I'm happy they did that. I'm happy with almost all the decisions they've made with Overwatch 2 that I've seen. They got rid of loot boxes. You don't have to pay for the game. It's just an automatic update to the game. This is tremendous. That's a really big fucking deal, man. One all free? Yeah, Overwatch 2 is free. Yeah, like, I, people, and this is what I'm saying, right? Is that people are critical of, of everything, like, for no reason. Yeah, it's, yeah, people just don't want to listen. It's nuts, man. Again, a loot box for level up was okay. All the loot boxes I got for actually free. Uh, yeah, but what I'm saying is like, if they just called it Overwatch 2.0, nobody would have a problem with it. No one should have a... It, who gives a fuck, man? Everyone does. I don't think that there's any... There's no logical reason that people care. They only care so they can dunk on Blizzard again. Yeah, it's a cash grab. Would you have wowed at that? They do that every other expand, every other week or every other year, I mean. Yeah, they do that all the time. Uh, people want to be angry. Yeah, I, I, I think that people are being completely unreasonable about Overwatch 2. I said this whenever the game came out uh, on beta. I, th I think that they're being very unreasonable and uncharitable for literally no reason. And it's like w what happens is that if you can't recognize positive outcomes and positive things, it creates a situation where there's nothing like... Only recognizing negatives and only perceiving things as a negative is just as bad as only perceiving things as a positive because neither one of them are rooted in reality. Did you even play it? It's absolute shit. It's the same as the first one. If you didn't like the first one, you're probably not going to like the second one. What the fuck did you expect? to prove how far one can fall at this point it's like your best buddy is hooked on crack and you've mm -hmm. been denying it for years okay but you have to face reality your best friend yeah. is a crack addict and nothing you there do will change that they're never going to kick the habit such is my relationship with Blizzard. Oh, I love the title of this up. article. It is it is Thank ripe you. for the memes. After conducting a thorough investigation, OJ Simpson has cleared himself of any wrongdoing. Damn, well that was a problem. Uh, okay, wow. Well, there we go. Problem solved. I can only hope this company is getting all their shitty behavior out before they get acquired mm -hmm. by Microsoft. So, this article is about that, um... You know, that big sexual harassment lawsuit. I saw that. Wait, can I... Can I still s say sexual... <laughs> okay. Damn. It was a good run, guys. You know we had that a good run. lawsuit that alleged female employees were uh, being harassed because they were females? There we go. Yeah. That they were being discriminated against, paid less, being passed up for promotions because yeah. they might get preggers, and all manner uh -huh. of horrible things. Remember that lawsuit? I remember well, that. Luckily, after a thorough investigation, Activision Blizzard has decided that it didn't happen. You're totally crazy, dude. Yeah, it didn't They're not happen. being gaslit. And there never was any. Well, so basically, what happened was, what what they do is like whenever people use language like this, it, it's important to hear what they don't say more than what they do say. So, for example, here. They said that the executives were not aware of it or that it was not a systematic issue. Saying something is a systematic issue is very different than saying that it happened. You see kind of what, what, where I'm coming from here? And also, like, the executives, like, yeah, that what they're saying is that they're, they're saying it in a way that is technically true, but, like, wildly misleading systemic issue with harassment discrimination yeah, it, or retaliation it's technically true but misleading well thank goodness for that now we can all rest easy 
This investigation was conducted by a Activision Blizzard board of directors. Thank God. And I'm sure this group they held know. no bias whatsoever yep, towards they know. the company they were <coughs> representing. Yes. Or were <coughs> subtly encouraged to uh, portray it in a positive uh -huh. light. But the article continues. There is no evidence to suggest that ABC yeah, exactly. senior executives ever intentionally ignored or attempted to downplay the instances of gender harassment that occurred and were reported. There Basically, leadership wasn't aware, and therefore you can't hold them accountable. I mean, fair enough, I wasn't there, I didn't lead this investigation. I have no idea what the truth is, aside from the company settling this lawsuit for 18 million dollars. I'm sure that's because, uh, they were gonna win. Yeah, I think that's because they were gonna win, guys. Uh, absolutely. And, and uh, gender harassment, how dare you? No, I, I think that what happened is that, that like, I don't think that everybody at Blizzard was bad, right? I think that it was a combination of probably, it, like you guys know this. You ever been to a party and like one guy shows up at the party and the entire vibe changes? Like I, I've had that happen before, or like two people or something like that. And, and like, yeah, yeah, that, that'll definitely happen uh, for sure. And, and so how many people does it really take to make Blizzard shitty? It doesn't take that many. Especially if they're in important positions. Yeah, I know him. He's me. <laughs> okay. God damn. Well, good for those employees that won the big bucks. And good for Activision Blizzard because they've since made back all of that money with the release of Diablo Immortal. It's true. A perfectly ethical video game. Yeah. So no biggie. <laughs> I'm gonna go buy some legendary gems now. Here in America, oh we stand God. by the belief that if you have problems, you should be able to throw money at it and watch it all disappear. And that also, if you have problems, other people should be able to throw money at exploiting those problems and making money off of you. Don't forget about that. Is a true American belief. Whatever the case is, I think we can all agree that something happened at the company for this lawsuit to be settled for 18 million dollars. Obviously, this yeah. is just paying for silence, you know. I mean, the fact yeah. that there were allegations of employees stealing breast milk is what? From what I've heard, is it, that's actually not unheard of. This has happened before in other companies too. It was, I remember whenever I, the news came out, it was disturbingly common how many people said that it happened. Yeah. I, bre breast milk. Yeah. I have several questions. Number one, who's bringing breast milk to work and to Activision Blizzard? And number two, who at Activision Blizzard? Well, to be is fair, like that that's not no no. It's like the 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 like moms because like I don't really know. Well he probably just doesn't know. Right. So like cause I, I didn't really I, I had no idea. Like I've never had a kid. I've never been around like a pregnant woman. I have no fucking idea really. So like what the fuck would I know? Uh but no, it, it's basically that uh, you know, like they have to like you know, like do like the I don't know, the fucking like milking the the, the, the fucking you, you you know what I mean, right? The, they gotta do that at work at some point and uh that that's why. Stealing breast milk. Apparently they have like some internal nursery yeah. or something, which I, I get, you know. Activision Blizzard devs demand breastfeeding protections and other reforms. They're advocating for the safety of their breast milk. I think it's safe to say we live in a society. But apparently yeah. a group of employees at AB have banded together with a list of demands, and one of those is to have witnesses at HR meetings. That sentence just makes me feel dirty, dude. Like, like, what the fuck happened in these meetings for workers to demand witnesses? Oh no. You are in direct violation of the Oh no. They say they have oh my all God. HR meetings documented. But don't worry, says Blizzard spokesperson Jessica Taylor. We have, for example, already upgraded our lactation facilities. Oh and I just learned that Activision Blizzard has 
Lactation facilities. Jesus, they have a whole list of breastfeeding related demands. I mean, you go girl and all that. Yeah. I just find this whole concept extremely bizarre. But then again, I also have a penis. Maybe I'm not supposed to understand. Maybe yeah, I'm that's supposed the thing to is like, I, support. Apparently the- I, I didn't understand that shit either at all. Like, and, and like, this is like, I, I, cause I didn't know how this shit worked either. Like whenever it happened and, and I watched it, I was like, okay, this is, all right. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah, it, it's like that kind of, all right. Yeah, sure. This makes sense. It's on it comment. No, it's private not. detective trying to uncover who the identity of this mysterious Robin Hood of breast milk was, yeah. and they might have narrowed it down. Now I can't find a high quality shot of this 4chan post. I saw but this. According to this Kotaku article, apparently some guy said he worked at a large tech company that he often raided the lactation room. He would then pour some of the milk into a water bottle, drinking it before a workout for maximum gains. Oh my god. Ew. Get out of here, man. Back in November, oh uh, thousands of employees had also, like, staged a walkout yeah, they in were protest pissed. of Bobby Kotick and asking him to resign. I mean, that's just... That didn't work. See, the thing is, like, Bobby, as I said, it's Bobby's world. And they're just living in it. It's crazy. So, good for them for sticking up for workers' rights, and I hope they win, and I hope Activision Blizzard treats its employees better. So now that I can't do ad breaks, um, here's the part where <laughs> I promote my Patreon. Please consider donating. I can't promise a whole bunch of rewards, but yeah. I do make exclusive posts there informing people about upcoming videos and plans. So, moving on, back in May, AB announced this King's Diversity tool, which oh, drew no. a lot of criticism, and oh, for no. good reason. They, uh... Quickly rewrote oh, this article, no. but thankfully the Wayback Machine exists. But I feel it's important to note that the oh, people God. who designed this oh, system boy. disavowed this article and the way AB was trying to use it. So let's... Yeah, it's that's the thing. That was the best part. Why, why do you get demonetized? It's a long story. Like, it, it's just... This chart fucking offends me. I think that it would offend anybody. <laughs> Take a look at the original article and then compare it to the new one. Okay. So what is this diversity tool? Well, it's a way for Activision Blizzard to assign number values to a character based on their physical disabilities, gender, race, ethnicity, skin color, uh, sexual orientation, mm -hmm. you name it, and assign a number value to that grading its diversity. With this innovative new system, the character design process now has a dystopian, I mean tangible way of avoiding tokenism, stereotypes, and exclusion. I love how they bring oh up tokenism God. while admitting how much value they place on character. Yeah, so like, yeah, th so this person has five tokens, this one has seven, this one only has one. So we made this system to avoid tokenism. Yep, that's right. There we go. Problem solved. Characters simply for their diversity rating, as I'll call it. Yeah. Like, isn't isn't that what tokenism is? Including characters yeah, not because of the value they add as a fictional person, but rather the checkbox that they mark off. It's, that's literally exactly what it is. I find something just inherently distasteful about that philosophy. These mother truckers also grade characters based on, like, disabilities? Like, God... This well, it's... The thing is that these people, they think about this stuff all the time. As I said, the way that Blizzard handles representation in video games is the same way that I would imagine, uh, you, you know, like, let's say there's, like, a black person in a car and everybody else you know is white and they turn on hip-hop music and they look back at them and smile that's the imagine that's the way that i imagine blizzard handling diversity yeah it it's just so i took the movie yep there it is holy shit yeah it it's it it's just so disconnected and weird what a weird way to promote diversity. Yeah, you like this, right? Yeah, no, I'm serious. Like, and there are people that do that. And they think that they're doing the right thing. This is so fucking weird, man. I'm creeped out. I feel like, I feel like spiders are crawling up my legs right now. It's like, even when Activision Blizzard yeah. is trying to do something good, they end up doing something terrible instead. I mean, yeah, you can say this is from a good place. Like, yeah, we want to see ourselves represented in games, don't we all? The question Everybody that does, does remain yeah. is this, how do we convert this feedback from a collective desire into a tangible reality? It's like, maybe, maybe you can't. The diversity space tool is a measurement device. 
you have normal people that make the games. Yeah, that's how. You just have normal people that just make the games, and then they'll add in different characters, and, and it'll be fine. Right, Butter? Thanks for the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's just... You just have uh, what what's normal? Uh, not that I'll tell you that 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 that's not it. Normal people don't make games. I think that plenty of them do. Like you never have these issues with games like uh like Final Fantasy. It, it's just that you know yeah, there's people that have dark skin in the game and they're just other characters and it's a fantasy game and that's it, right? It, it, it's not a it, it, it's like not overt. It's it's not pushed or anything. It's just that's what it is to help identify how diverse the set of character traits are, and in turn how diverse that character and mm -hmm. casts are when compared to the norm. Yep. Implying there is some kind of diversity state. These are games, the thing is like, I, I do think that it's, it's fair, right? That like people would want to have characters in the game that look like them. Like whenever I see a lot of people that are white, I look at their characters in game, they're white characters. I see people that are black, a lot of their characters, they're black characters. I think people in general want to have a character that looks vaguely like they do. Butter, thanks to the 20 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I don't. I, I think that most people do that. Like, if you go back, like, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Yeah, yeah. People probably want characters in video games that share a general sense of similarity to their appearance, uh, especially if it's, like a, if it's a customizable character. People do that. They're furries. I don't know. Standard or lack I don't really thereof. Care, to be like honest. what? Oh no, what? no. I, I understand that there are a lot of people that don't care, but I have noticed that I would say, like eighty percent, because you know I, I I'm I'm in the MMO community. Like look and pay attention to whenever post people post pictures of like their characters that they've made in MMOs. I think this is actually a good idea, right? The Shojo, thanks for uh, eleven subs. Thank you so much. Like. Uh, Po like, look at the posts that people make. Like, go on a Facebook group for a while where it's like, oh, post your character, and then look at the picture of the person. Look at the character. How many of those characters shame this, share the same race as as the person posting? I bet it's like 80%. I, I'd say probably even higher. Is the norm for diversity? Like, <laughs> you, you can quantify how diverse a group of people are, but you can't attach a number value to an individual. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's so weird. Maybe this tool can be used for something good, but the way Blizzard represented it, it... it Why would you guys want me to, like, uh, people are really malding about this. Is it really that outrageous of an idea for people to play a role-playing game and want to have a character that looks like them in the game? Is this really an outrageous, debatable topic that you want to have a vote on? What are you, fucking stupid? Of course people want to have characters that look like them. Like, how is anybody debating this with me? You've got to be a fucking moron to think otherwise. A vote? Why would I vote? The thing is, why would I vote on something that I have observed over the past 20 years? Because people will vote as opposite of it. Here's the reason why. It's because any time that you make any argument that people want characters that represent their in real life identity, people immediately become defensive against it because they categorize that as putting wokeness in video games. So they will vote against it because of an ideological categorization of the behavior. So I am not going to put it up to a poll or a vote because I know the way that people are going to vote and it's not authentic. I know this. I, I'm completely confident about it. Like I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to back down on this. I think anybody who's disagreeing with me is a delusional idiot, and I can guarantee it to be fucking true. I think that 80%, if you want my honest opinion, is probably an understatement. Feels dystopian. Like, imagine if the government got a hold of this. You also can't really trust Activision Blizzard Delusional to mean what they idiots. say when they say diversity is important to them. Like, yeah. this, this company is mathematically engineering its video game characters to appeal to the broadest demographic possible, yeah. which isn't inherently a bad thing. It's just we're talking about Activision Blizzard. You don't want to do that. You think you do, but you don't. So you bet you're. I've probably seen that clip 500 times at this point. Yeah, I've probably seen it that many times. Holy shit! 
buns that diversity yep. and money are two inextricable terms to them. Alana Cole says the tool was tested by the dev teams working on Call of Duty Vanguard. We used the diversity tool to figure out what more diversity looks like across all our characters in both campaign, multiplayer, and live seasons. See, I knew I was onto something when I was talking about how boring and uninspired the Vanguard cast of characters were. Like, I, like it feeds into that idea that this these games are being mathematically engineered scientifically oh yeah they're being done and they're made specifically like this to have uh it, you know to look like a, a textbook cover or something like that somebody said your argument is no way does 80 percent of people play hard and don't give a shit to play a white male human what how can so many people be so stupid how can so many people be so stupid I don't understand this. How is it possible that so many people here? Well, let, let's do this. We're going to put on sub mode. I'm going to address I'm going to address a few of these arguments and then we're going to move on. Okay? Is there anybody who has a legitimate real argument for this that thinks that I am genuinely wrong about this? And and my argument is that I think that the overwhelming majority of people play characters of the same race as them or at least they do not play characters of an opposite race. So I think that there are more people that are white that are playing white characters and more people that are black that would play black characters, statistically, or Asian or anything like that. That is, that is my argument. I think this is a, a general, is there anybody who has an argument against this? If 80% of people play the same race, there'd be 80% of humans in fantasy games, though. You don't understand. So the difference is that there aren't orcs in real life so that's not part that's not part of it because there's no orcs in real life you understand am a guy playing girl character what does that make me what race is the character yeah exactly and, and, and that's what i'm saying is it yeah let, let's go ahead we'll, we'll go to the rest of them yeah not a human okay yeah sure most guys play girls. Most guys play guys. Yeah, I think most guys would play guys. I think most girls play girl characters. I think that's generally what it is. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, of course. So, for example, Pokemon expanded their choices of players to choose a character that resembles their real life race. Yeah, exactly. Uh, some games you have no choice, like Apex, etc. Yeah, nobody's talking about that. I think that people are so vitriolically against like the wokeness and anything that is considered political in video games that they are willing to be so extreme and so unreasonable that they go and they die on hills that make literally no sense. I think that most people can agree that we don't want to have video games that are a, you know, just like very thinly veiled political messaging. Nobody likes this. Uh, but that's not what's going on here. This this is a reasonable opinion that makes perfect sense. Talking about strictly about race, and I think that you're right. Of course. Uh, are, are there any more arguments? I just want to make sure that there aren't before before I move on. Why would people want to look like themselves in a high fantasy game? Uh, Self-insert. Uh, people want to feel like it's them in the world. That's the way I do. You have it completely wrong, though. No, most people don't care about colors or skins and just want to have fun. Well, if they don't care, well, no, 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 I didn't say it. They don't care. So, so you're saying that people, there is not a trend. Oh, 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 let me actually, let me make sure I, I know who said this. Um, fuck. Where, where is it? M majority of players in fantasy games don't play humans. Yeah. Well, that's not part of the conversation where say, I forgot what it was. You would have proven this argument on stream before with the data I supplied you. People are being weird. Well, of course they are. If you're talking about playing skin color, I think you're right. When it comes to fantasy and gender races, I think the numbers might be different. Well, obviously, people will choose to play skeletons and orcs and dragons. Yeah, but that's not part of the factor because that's not in the scope of what you can be as a human being. Like, of, of course not. All right, all right. I'll take two more minutes and then I want to move on past this. You originally didn't specify race. Are uh, you talking about appearance and making the character look like them, but then you changed your argument to be about more about race and skin color? Um... I, I think that it was completely about that, and I do also think that most people play characters that are of their gender. Like, I, I think that if you take a thousand people that are playing a video game, and you look at a thousand women and a thousand men in a video game that you can, that you can just make whatever character you want, 
there will be a trend that people that have that are women play women characters and people that are men play male characters yeah I, it's not it, it's not a guarantee but i i think that's generally the case uh, people in these nuances that are closer to identity or goes into fantasy races yeah sure debate Andy's trying to poke as many holes as hard as they can no there's not the thing is the people that are debating me on this are just stupid so they can't poke holes in it at all because I'm completely right and it's common sense and anybody who's disagreeing with me is an idiot uh, I, I I this this is crazy the gender thing I disagree with oh my god how can so many people be so dumb like you, you it's not even a debate like I, why am I even debating this if you think that you're just a fucking moron like I, I don't even know what I'm wasting my time on. I'm wasting my time on this for no reason. Yeah, you're just a fucking moron. Like, there's... there, It's common sense that people are going to want to play characters that look like them in the context of playing human characters. No shit. Anybody who doesn't think that is dumb and it's not even worth talking to them because they're probably ideologically invested in this and it's not even a logical argument to begin with. Engineered to be as diverse as possible. Not because it makes the games better, but because they want to appeal to everyone. Yeah. I, I feel like when I can tell that you're trying to be diverse and it doesn't feel natural, yeah. then, then it feels like there's an ulterior motive there. And well, I think it takes away from the suspense of disbelief because people like to play fantasy games because it's a fantasy game. They like to have the escapism of the game. So if they feel like the game is being created in a way that's contextualized around like a political ideology or around some sort of like, uh, you know, so, some sort of like a goal or something like that, something political, um, yeah, it takes away from the art as well. I think so too. And, uh, Sam, I know people playing women was calling it triggered over super chat as post stream lecture people why there's right and wrong. I, I know that there's a lot of people that are crying about this. I understand. Um, I'm going to start banning people for disagreeing with me on this because they're just stupid. I, I, I don't want to have unreasonable people in my chat that are saying that I'm wrong for this because they're just stupid. I know I'm right about this. It's common sense. Any reasonable person would come to this conclusion. And people that are trying to fight me over this are just unreasonable babies that are mad. So I'll just permaban them. I don't want to read those messages. They're stupid. Turns me off. Overwatch is actually yep. pretty good about its diversity and variety of characters because the basis of the story is the best operators from all over the world coming together. And, and it's a hero shooter. It makes sense. Yeah, the diversity of course. in Overwatch is cool. The Overwatch 2 well, Yeah, I mean, Overwatch is literally built around people of the world coming together. That's why you have all the maps that are around the world. I don't think anybody's complaining about diversity in Overwatch. Blizzard also had a chance to experiment with the tool with equally enthusiastic first impressions. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the updated article. I'm surprised they didn't start with, It seems this blog post struck a nerve. There has yeah. been conversation online regarding this tool, particularly concerning its intent and our commitment to diversity. We've edited this blog post to clarify that this mm -hmm. prototype is not being used in active game development. So that was a fucking lie. It, it, it's of not course. Like, yeah, they just... The reason why they did it is they put it out there because they wanted to look like they were doing the right thing. Blizzard can't go... I, I think that, like, Blizzard... Virtue signaling is like oxygen for Blizzard. And they can't go long enough without trying to put something out there to gain the approval of people that like to see virtue signaling. The second that they have that happen or whatever, yeah. It's like they, they can't go without like maybe a month or two without coming out with some statement that like they care about people that are a minority in some way. It's so weird. Being used in active game development, yeah. folks. It's only being used in COD Vanguard and Overwatch 2. Mm -hmm. How could you walk back this straight up lie, you know? The objective of using the tool is to uncover unconscious bias by identifying existing norms and representation and acknowledging growth opportunities for inclusion. I'm gonna keep it real with you, Activision Blizzard. This isn't gonna make people forget about that massive sexual harassment lawsuit. Yeah, I've seen this meme. identifies what stereotypical characters in different genres Corporate look pandering? like, which are not always... Well, what it was is that they were trying to put something out there. This is what Blizzard was trying to do. They were trying to put something out there that made them look good in the eyes of the public. But the truth is that, like, the, the people that care about a, a chart like that or whatever, um, 
those people probably there's like almost none of them number one like the people that are super super outspoken about like these different problems etc they're like one or five percent of the population most normal people are like yeah i just want to have characters that kind of look like me and other than that i don't really give a shit like they're not really going out of their way like kato thanks for five subs yeah they don't really care it's not a big deal they're not going and making a checklist and doing the math on how many characters are of which race or which gender or something like that normal people don't give a shit about this they just want to play a video game and you see this get proven over and over and over again whenever games come out especially games from like other places in the world that don't have any of this stuff they just come out and it doesn't fucking matter everybody likes the game and there's nothing to it it's that simple it's the loud minority it's the loud minority of people who oftentimes don't even play the video games in the first place. They're just using the video games as a tool to progress their, their viewpoint in the world. That's it. The most conducive or representative of yeah. diversity. Yeah, but sometimes stereotypes are fun in video games. Just look at the cast of the Call of Duty Zombies crew. Exaggerated stereotypes when applied equally allow us to all laugh at ourselves. I don't know, this whole article just feels like such a robotic, sterile, cold, and yeah. corporate way of looking at character creation in video games. Well, that's games. why everybody hated it. Yeah, that, that's, that's why everybody hated it. Like, people, and, and then they had to walk it back because of that. Yeah. Like, why do you need some kind of diversity calculator in order to make good, unique characters? I just feel like that's normal storytelling. That's art. It comes from a passion to deliver an experience or a feeling to people. Moreover, yeah. why do you need I think to most people brag about that. this tool and write up a blog post if your motives aren't to get brownie points? That's Especially clearly what it was. how you removed all reference of it being used in active game development. That like, was the only reason that they did it. They only did it to get approval from people on Twitter and, and different places online. They wrote it hoping that they would get good PR from places like Kotaku, etc. That's the only reason they put it out there. Come on, we know you're using this in Overwatch 2. Speaking of Overwatch 2, Overwatch 2 will be a free-to-play live service. <sighs> That's what I said. God damn it. Oh no, not again. I feel like the term live service has just been completely soured over the years. Like it, I'm sure Blizzard can handle yeah. it, but, but you know, with how they've created Diablo Immortal, everyone has to start asking some serious questions about what kind of ethical problems Overwatch 2 is going to have. Cause you know, they said that they were getting rid of loot boxes. I actually think that's huge. I think people again are being unreasonable. Wait, wait, wait. So you think that they lied? You think they're straight up lying and there's going to be loot boxes in the game? Is that what you're saying? You think that they lied and there's going to be some other form of gotcha mechanic instead of loot boxes? The fact is that Blizzard has not really earned people's trust. I can see why a lot of people don't believe it. We'll have to wait and see. It's gonna have some of those. And while this game is marketed as a sequel, it's more like a blob that's going to absorb the current mm -hmm. Overwatch and change it into the something you may like or may not. Apparently the format is switching from 6v6 to 5v5, yeah. which I feel like poses a lot of problems. If only one tank on each team, it's like, I'm sure it'll be fun, but I stopped playing Overwatch because the game felt more and more restrictive with later updates and changes. Roll Q I stopped playing it because the game really wasn't as dynamic. There was only like a few things that you could do in the game. Like for example, I felt like every game felt the same. Whenever I would play like Warzone or uh, like PUBG or something like that, or even Fortnite, but I think Warzone and PUBG are really good examples. Like the way that you would play that game if you were dropping at school or like military base or uh, you know, like anywhere, right? Or like the, the hangars in, in Warzone, that is a completely different experience. And like playing the game with like a sniper versus like a machine gun and stuff like that, uh, it's very, very different. It's much more dynamic. I think that's what makes BRs so good takes so much fun out of the game I, you know part of the appeal of overwatch is that you could change characters at any point and now you can't now you have to be a specific 
class of character and stick to that. Like, imagine if yeah, they well, did... Well, the reason why they did that is because they they realized that they couldn't balance tanks and have tanks be fun to play, and at the same time make them... make it to where everybody wouldn't just want to play a tank. I, I think that's probably what happened. And so it's like, is that really Blizzard's fault? I think that ultimately, yes, it is. And it's probably a bad solution, and it's a... Uh, it's it's basically them saying, okay, well, nobody can play a character like this because it's too overpowered. That's Bronze with the five of the subs. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's long-term oversight. Players sucked at countering. Yes. This to League of Legends. Goddamn people would fix? be pissed. Yeah. The free-to-play nature is likely there to lower your expectations for what a sequel should be. And if you like the current version of Overwatch, yeah. well, too bad. It's going to be replaced entirely, whether you like that or not. Some of the other- I think that's fair. I think people that complain about that, again, are being unreasonable. Every every live service game changes. You don't get to go back and play Warzone how it was on release. You don't get to go back and play PUBG or uh, fucking Fortnite how it was on release. The game changes and it's dynamic all the time. You, you can't have a game uh, stay the same and then have it continue to evolve. WoW Classic? And what happened with that? How many people are playing on the WoW Classic era servers now? Highly advertised features include maps, but the time of day is different. You mean the bright map is now dark and the dark map is now bright? What? Wow. I, I don't know if this is just me, but I'd be much more excited for Overwatch 2, number one, if AB wasn't such a terrible company, but also if it was marketed as like a full-priced sequel. Just sell me the game, you know? Overwatch is still fun, however, with Blizzard- I actually think that selling a box price game is dying in general. I think that more and more games will move towards being free-to-play, because it's such a massive barrier to entry like, you think about a lot of the games, like Fortnite. Why was Fortnite so popular? It's because it was free to fucking play. You could just log on. Same with Warzone. Why was Warzone so popular? It was free to fucking play. You could log on and play Call of Duty Warzone for fucking free. That is insane. And same thing with, uh, yeah, is Robux like that? I don't know. Uh, yeah, PoE. So you don't want to have that barrier to entry with the games where like, oh, you play with the game and, and like, oh, you want to play the game, but it's like $40. I don't know if I'm going to like it. So you just don't play it. And the fact is because other games are coming out with free to play models, it kind of makes it to where if you're not doing that, you're at a disadvantage. Uh, what, what, what's this here from software? Always have to buy games because they make good games. Um, yeah, you always have games that you put out that are buy, like same with God of War or something like that, sure. But I, I think that especially for multiplayer games like this, it, that, that are like, you know, games you just pick up and you play them for a while, it's not like a, uh, you know, like a curated designed experience. It, it's, it's a multiplayer game. Uh, I think that many more of them will come and become more, more free to play. Single player games, I, I would expect to continue to, to cost money track record i wouldn't be surprised if the brass milk was stolen with this one too luckily they've been focusing on the important things like changing mccree's name to paul cassidy i'm still calling him mccree moving everybody on. is and, and like yeah and, and now it's like because they tried to change it like if they had never mentioned that his name was mccree and it was named after the guy i think that it would have been better because the character is separate from uh, the the person i thought it was weird that they did that i don't understand why i i it was the same thing like and to be honest with you it's kind of like an ego thing right to name one of the main characters after somebody that works at the company i mean that's bro like that's that's it's one thing to have like a character that's like a reference of somebody that worked there but like to have like one of the main fucking characters named after this guy holy shit let's calm down man yeah, well, well, you go. I think that it's uh, it's like escapism in a way, right? It's like, what are you putting yourself in the game, man? Just make the game. Rise, try to mirror. I mean, I still think it's weird. I mean, yeah. Onto it's very common. Diablo Immortal. I always feel like Blizzard <laughs> intentionally packages terrible news or terrible games with things they know yeah. people are going to be excited about. 
I can't tell if they were trying to be crafty or stupid with showing Diablo 4 gameplay just 10 days after Immortal came out. Diablo well, of course that's what they were trying to do, because everybody was talking about Diablo, and they can latch onto the SEO and promote Diablo 4, exactly. Uh, yeah, of course, McCree is a, is a commonly news name. Yeah, exactly. I... Uh, Rise and Trimere aren't their real names. I, I'm not going to get into like the specifics. All I'm thinking is that I think that uh, you know the references to having characters in the game that are named after developers. It's okay to do it for like a, a lesser degree, but I think that Blizzard probably did it too much. That's really all it comes down to. Uh, McCree as a character was evolved and fleshed out as an individual that is separate from the person that it was named after. It felt weird to change the character's name because people had a story behind the person named McCree. Uh, I, it was unnecessary. It didn't help anybody. And again, you can say it's for the, uh, you know, it's for the employees that were maybe negatively affected by the guy. And I think that's fair to say. But there's also fans that just want to have the character that they've all known and loved be the same character. And changing it removes that element of escapism. And it reminds them every single time that they read that name that this is a video game and it's tainted in this way. So it's, uh, who cares? Oh, I, I don't think it's really a big deal either way. I'm just talking about it. Immortal, if you don't know, is one they of the, the most yeah, they insidious did. examples of video game monetization in history. Mm -hmm. Blizzard has gone so far down the path of greed, they've actually outdone themselves. Yeah. With Immortal having beaten the previous record for lowest Metacritic user score, a record previously held by Blizzard with Warcraft 3 Reforged. Now, for shits and giggles, oh let's my see God. how much money we would have to spend based on the odds to get a five-star gem, the best kind of item. Please play this the... app calculates oh, yep, how much there it, it could is. potentially cost you to get a five-star legendary gem. Yep. In fact, one streamer had spent over $10,000 without getting one. All right, let's go, let's see it. Get that money. Get that money, come on. Come on. Turbo spin. Turbo spin that. Let's go. $2,000. Let's get $3,000. Let's hit $3,000 $3, spin on the game. Wow. Uh, $400,000. $4,000. I mean, 400. that's not till later. So that's till season two. It is. Well, would you look at that? Only 6,925 buckaroos. And you only That's have cheap. to complete 2,770 dungeons. What a God steal. damn. Now, we all know mobile games have a tendency to be monetized in ways that are questionable. But the extent of Immortal and the fact that it comes from Blizzard, it just pushes the boundaries of video uh -huh. game monetization in ways yet unseen by man. Truly, some demonic forces have taken over at Blizzard but it's much more likely that they've been there the whole time. It's very insidious how the store is specifically set up to encourage players to buy the $25 bundle of gems by making the other bundles just shy of the amount of orbs you need to buy legendary gems. Just like how Blizzard is mathematically engineering diversity, so too has Diablo Immortal been mathematically perfected to be the most profitable video game possible. Reg I feel like people need to realize that, like, these things are done intentionally. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of people just assume that it's like, oh, well, that's just how it is. Because once you realize that these things are being done intentionally, no shit. No. Like, if you polled, if you took a random sample of a thousand people that played Diablo Immortal... I bet most people wouldn't know that. Of course, you guys know this. And absolutely, of course, you guys know We talk about it all the time. But an average person who's not consuming video game media, who just sees a, a, a thing here, and they're like, yeah, this looks good, they're, they're, they're not going to give a fuck. Yeah, and, and that's what it is. Shirt guy tried to warn mm -hmm. us. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? He yeah. tried to stop Diablo he did. Immortal from releasing, from infecting the phones of innocent people, and we didn't listen. 
We did listen. I love how whenever he, he like that that guy went out and he said that he played Diablo Immortal, it was exactly what he expected, and he's not playing it anymore. That's it. He's done. Yeah, it was spirit. It's really isolated. The predatory gaming mobile tactics. Well, no. It's that players, like an average person, doesn't know or recognize this because they don't look at it uh, critically. They they don't they just play the game like they they've got no idea. Now, how do you know this is true? It's because the game has like four stars on the Apple Play Store. Like anybody who knew this about a video game would not rank a game with four stars. They'd rank it with one or two. So it's so obvious that they they know what this is. People have no fucking idea. The only people that know this are, uh, are are gamers, and that's it. Or you're okay with it. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, that that's actually a good point as well. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys I, all I have phones. Phone. Right? Blizzard also tried to warn us. Quickly, burn your phone, everyone, so you don't install Diablo Immortal. Take that! Just when you thought loot boxes were done for and on the path to obscurity, just when you thought the industry consumers and yeah. fucking lawmakers all agreed that loot boxes were gambling and terrible, well, Blizzard has successfully found a way to reintroduce loot boxes while trying to sidestep gambling laws. Yeah, luckily it didn't fool the people of Belgium or other countries. No, it's not going to fool anybody. The only people that it's going to fool are people that want to be fooled. Anybody can see that it's bullshit. Yeah, anybody, just look at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what they're trying to do. Okay, no, it's not going to work. Countries where this practice is prohibited now. I can't say I'm surprised by this level of dedication to reintroduce loot boxes. Mm -hmm. Blizzard does not have to disclose the odds of these legendary gems and whatnot because technically there's some in-game skill required to get to the loot box and therefore isn't gambling All yeah this but that didn't work because the companies just uh, the countries just said like ah yep yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's gambling you know it uh, no we're not gonna we're not gonna put up with your shit and and thank god for that yeah that that's yeah they just said we don't care we know what you're trying to do you're not gonna go around the rule by adding this this step no nope stuff is described in mm -hmm. perfect detail in the video the immoral design of diablo immortal by josh strife hayes we and saw I highly this one. recommend watching that diablo immortal sets a new low for gaming but also blizzard at least with loot boxes and overwatch it sets a new low so far diablo 4 is not out yet dragonflight hasn't released and overwatch 2 is to be determined so, so far, this has been the lowest. Like, the cute and fun characters gave some kind of now. justification for purchase, but the stuff you buy in Diablo Immortal is to progress the actual game. Bro, yes. like I said, it seems AB always has some new game to announce right around the time a bunch of people are really pissed off at them. Sir, yeah. more allegations of sexual harassment in the workplace have surfaced. Release the album for them. How's that trailer for Overwatch 2 coming? Doesn't this new video game make you forget about all the stolen breast milk at our company? Tor Wait. Okay. <laughs> What if one of the people there watched my video? Because that's what I said the whole time. Every gaming every gaming boycott is one three-minute cinematic away from being over. And they actually agreed with me, and that's why they do it. So really, all we have to do is complain about Blizzard enough, and we'll get new content. That's effectively what... All right, I, I, guys, I've got it. We're going to get Dragonflight Alpha this week. Bjorn says no to sexual harassment. I don't know, man. Big companies like this tend to mm -hmm. show you who they really are with their actions and not their meaningless words. As funny as it is that stuff like stolen breast milk can be a punchline for my many, many jokes, yeah. the truth is that some pretty terrible things happen to it, Blizzard, it's most likely. Bad. But humor is how I always deal with tragedy. In any case, it's hard to be excited for any upcoming Blizzard games given their horrible track record. Yeah. Truth is, if they were to announce Warcraft 4, the upcoming Blizzard games, given their whole. I really hope that like people take into account why are these games getting such a wildly different score than what the users are giving them? Isn't this evidence that the way that people are rating games is wrong? Like, I mean, yeah, it, doesn't anybody look at this and say, hey, 
this is a problem. Paid reviews, I bet. Yeah, it, it's like, why are people not looking for, uh, uh, like, accountability for this or some degree of explanation? I mean, there's no accountability, right? It's just a review of the game. But, like, why is somebody considered a, a credible critic whenever their opinions deviate so drastically from what the public believes, whenever their opinions are supposed to be an indication of, of what, what is true. How do you fix it? Um, how do you fix it? That's a really good question. Uh, I, I think that you'd probably have to fix it by giving... Uh, the people, some sort of a way to have control over who are the critics. But you do, in a way, right? Because those are the people that you uh, that you watch. And if you, nobody listens to them, then they're not critics anymore. But is that really true anymore? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you want every critic to conform to the hive mind? I think there's a big difference between conforming to the hive mind and writing something that is disingenuous. So, yeah, it, th that's really what it is. Yeah, it, it, it's a sticky situation. Don't know what to do. Yeah, critics are money biased. Here's what I think is going to happen. Here's what I think happens. I think that a lot of these critics have personal relationships with people that work at the companies. And on top of that, there's also some degree of access journalism that's going on. And these people enjoy certain privileges or opportunities because of the fact that they rate things more favorably. And because of that, uh, those two things and maybe a handful of other things put together, uh, that causes them to give reviews and give feedback publicly that is not not entirely reflective of the product of the game. And also another factor is that a lot of the critics that rate these games, they don't play them enough to really be able to rate them. Like, I, I think that you should have, like, you know how, I think it's like Steam, you have to play the game for a certain amount of time to give a review on it or something like this. Like, I don't know if it's the same on some of these other games, but like, they should have these for people that play, that, that, that rate them critically. Like, you should have to play a game for like fucking 50 hours before you rate the fucking game if it's a multiplayer game like this. Like, what, what, what do you mean? Like, you, you, like, it's a, like, New World was the worst. It was the worst offender of this. Every single New World article that I saw for a review for the game, every screenshot was from the starting zone. Every fucking one. And they're like level 20 or level 18 or something like that. Talking about, oh, yeah, this is, this is how good the game is. The game's so great, right? It's just fucking ridiculous, man. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Steam review is not perfect. What a surprise. A system created by humans who are imperfect is imperfect in itself. Who could have ever predicted this? Every system is imperfect, but it is the pursuit of perfection that should be pursued, not the per perfection itself. Horrible track record. Truth is, if they were to announce Warcraft 4, I'd sense. probably be like, great, can't wait to see how they ruin that one too. That's where my mind is at with Blizzard games. The only new stuff I'm interested from them is re-releasing old Wrath. games, like Wrath of the Lich yeah. King. But who knows, maybe Activision Blizzard will get acquired by Microsoft, mm -hmm. and this will all be some horrible dream that we look back on and laugh. So thank you all for That's watching what's gonna the happen for sure, guys. of Activision Blizzard. They are a hilariously bad company. Jesus. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and subscribe. Don't forget to check out War Thunder in the description below. Make sure you click the link in the description and download it today to Microsoft get those exclusive will fix it, rewards. Yeah. And a big thank you to all my new patrons. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace. That was a good video. Uh, I liked it. That was a good fucking video. There we go. You get a shit on fuck? No, we didn't. That's why it's even important to give him some support, guys. Uh, Act Man's been through the ringer with uh, with <laughs> Wizard and also with YouTube. And so, uh, yeah, please go ahead and give him some support. It's a good video. Absolutely. It's a pretty good summary of everything, too, I would say. And uh, it's just, uh, to me, w whenever I look at this stuff, it's very disappointing. And I, I do think that he's right about how what it's caused people to do is just be very uh, skeptical of what's going to happen in the future. I think that's really what the problem is. Yeah, he's not monetized anymore. Uh, they have four out of five stars on Android, and no Android user checks Metacritic, so who gives a fuck? Exactly. And, and like, that's really what the issue is, is that you have... Like, I, I think it is a really, really, really big problem. I'm going to be honest. 
I think it's a huge problem that these games get a, a rating that is so good and the ratings and the goals and the, the way that these critics view these games is so wildly different from what the people actually think. That's really bad. That, that, is, that is really, really bad. Because the, the, the critics have different, different levels of like, oh, this is good because of something that nobody cares about that's actually a player of video games. Well, what the fuck are you rating it like that for? What, why the fuck are you here? You, you're not like, why are you a critic? Like, it's just so weird, man. Some critics get paid from game companies to rate it. Uh, I don't think that's very common. I, I, I feel like that's not extremely common at all. But, uh, you know, maybe that could be the case. I have no idea. There are different reviewing criteria. Review based on what it is. Players uh, rate on what they want it to be. Fundamentally, it gets reviewed on if it's a good game or not. That is what it comes down to.